Tessa Blanchard. My pronouns are she and her. And my current position is a fifth year PhD candidate at the University of British Columbia. So I got to where I was, uh, started about in my undergrad. In my fourth year of my undergrad, I had the opportunity to do an honors project where I worked in a lab for eight months and I conducted research on rainbow trout. And that's kind of where I discovered my love for science and research and especially answering questions on fish. After that, I had the opportunity to conduct my master's at the University of Guelph, where I studied the respiratory system of air breathing fish that can live out of water for up to 80 days. And then after that, we had a connection with here at UBC where I had the opportunity to come work under the supervision of Dr. Schulte, where I'm currently studying the effects of temperature on early development and their long-term impacts on the adult phenotype. So I kind of made my way through undergrad, masters and PhD, moving between different labs at different universities to improve on my skills. Yeah, so my project currently here at the University of British Columbia is working on a species called Fungulus heteroclitus. They are a top minnow located on the east coast of Canada and North America. So you could find them from New Brunswick all the way down to Georgia. And we are interested in understanding how temperature during early development affects their adult phenotypes. So more interested in how if we expose them when they're uh, developing in the egg at different temperatures, either constant or both fluctuating temperatures, we then put them to a common temperature and then we're interested in seeing how that may change their hypoxia tolerance, so how they handle low oxygen levels. Their thermal tolerance, also known as CT max, which is how high of a temperature can they handle before they lose equilibrium. We're also interested in looking at how early temperatures shape their metabolism. So are they changing the amount of oxygen they consume later on as adults? And do we see if these changes last over the course of one year once they start developing? I'm also interested in looking at the molecular level. So are we seeing changes in their gene expression if we expose them to these different temperatures when they're younger, as well as are we seeing any changes in their DNA methylation? So one method that we commonly use, I've used over the last two years, is a hypoxia test. So fungulus are actually really hypoxia tolerant. That means they can handle really low levels of oxygen, up to around 2% of oxygen levels and we can hold them there for about two hours. So one test that we do is we put the fish in these little containers, we leave them in the water and we slowly decrease oxygen from 100% all the way down to 2%. Once it hits that 2% level of oxygen in the tank that they're in, we then start a timer and we test how long they can survive at this 2%. They will not die, but they'll just actually flip over upside down. Once that happens, we take the fish out, we'll put them in a bucket with 100% oxygen, and they will fully recover from that experiment. So the longer a fish would last, we would consider that fish to be more hypoxia tolerant. So that is something that I've had to modify a little bit because I work with much smaller fish than normal. In our lab, we work about fish that are this size, and my fish are about this size. So I had to redevelop new little chambers and actually build all of my experimental design to run this experiment in the lab. So something that I'm really proud about is learning how to breed fungulus in the lab. So fungulus have been bred in past papers, but nothing has been recently done or I couldn't figure out how to breed fungulus, especially the northern population. There's only a period during May to June in which they're able to lay eggs. So I developed this method where I would bring the fish down. I did it in about March. For one month, they stayed at about eight degrees. So I faked a winter condition for them. And then over the course of that month, they stayed in that with low light, similar to if they were experiencing winter. And then during that next month, I actually slowly increased the temperature a degree every other day to mimic as if they're going into that summer to hopefully tell them that they need to make eggs and be able to reproduce in the environment. And I was actually very successful. I got over a thousand eggs when trying this method. And it's become so successful that I've had two other professors contact me to learn how to breed fungulus in the lab because it's actually been quite a struggle for a lot of labs, not understanding that they need to go through this fake winter and then transition to a summer to allow the eggs to reproduce and make those eggs that you'd like.
So I am in my last month of completing my experiments for my PhD, and then I'll be writing my thesis. So my next chapter is to be looking for a postdoc. I found my love for teaching during my PhD, so I'm hoping to complete my postdoc in teaching, looking specifically at how ungraded classrooms affect learning in biology labs, and hoping to study that a bit more. It's becoming a new way of teaching. So that is hopefully my goal for my next step, is to continue studying science, but looking more at the aspects of teaching pedagogy rather than uh, research. So one thing I love about what I do is every day is different. Some days you're coming in to run experiments. Uh, some days you're coming in to take care of fish. Sometimes I'm going to teach. Some days I'm writing a paper or I'm reviewing a paper. So there's a big diversity in all the different tasks that you get to complete and it kind of keeps things always fun because there's always something new to do and new to learn. So one thing that I'd like to share with undergrads in the field of science is that your undergraduate program won't always be easy. I struggled with my first two years of undergrad just learning how to succeed in university and finding what I really liked. In my third year, I had the chance to take an animal physiology course, which I fell in love with the content and I knew that was the area that I would do well in. So I continued taking courses in that field, which then led me to do my fourth year honors project in animal physiology, where I discovered my love for science. So even though I struggled in my first and second year of university, which kind of held me back in my grades, I still was able to overcome those challenges and succeed and find my passion and be successful in my career, even though I had those obstacles in the way. Mm -hmm.